it's a particularly challenging time for leadership and it, the challenge comes in three forms. There's a challenge around complexity, there's a challenge around creativity, and there's a challenge around commitment. So the challenge around complexity is dealing with the increasingly complex nature of the world that organizations have to deal with. Um, and a lot of organizations are meeting that complexity challenge with complicatedness, making the businesses more and more and more complicated, which doesn't address the problem. So there's a leadership challenge around um, intelligent simplicity, a uh, sophisticated level of, of an understanding of simplicity that the organizations are dealing with to meet this complex world. There's a, an issue around creativity. So if you ask any MD or any CEO, you know, what are the top four or five things you'd want your organizations to be able to do or your people to be able to do? Innovation comes up in almost every one, every client that we deal with here in the IMI, and we deal with hundreds of clients a year. Innovation is a top, top, top priority. So having people be more innovative, more creative, more entrepreneurial in their approach, that's a challenge that will, you know, to address the, this kind of fast-paced world. And then there's the challenge of commitment. People aren't staying in organizations for very long. So when you're looking at developing people, when you're looking at L&D, there's a real trade-off. To what extent do you develop people who are going to be gone in two years' time? Or if, can you put in a development program that's going to last several years knowing that the people won't be around, necessarily won't be around? So we're, we're seeing much more fast-paced interventions much more short-term interventions that are meant to get in, make some behavioral change in a, in a rapid way, and then kind of move on so that those people can very quickly um, add value to the business after the, after the intervention. So those three coming together make it a particularly challenging time for leaders. So with management theories, management leadership theories have, have come and gone. I suppose when you step back from why would complexity or creativity or commitment be a problem? Um, they're not intellectual challenges, they're emotional challenges. And the issue that organizations are facing is dealing with the emotional life of the organization. So in situations of complexity of, of change, what people are experiencing is fear. And um, what we need to do is to teach leaders or develop leaders who, are, who have the emotional intelligence to deal with high levels of emotions, high levels of stress high levels of fear, high levels of anxiety, high levels of anger, high levels of frustration. So those are the kind of things that when you look back at why these features in the environment would present a leadership challenge, why would a complex world present a leadership challenge? Well, it, it presents a leadership challenge in that it creates an emotional reaction in people that you have to manage. So you can't think your way through, you can't use the big right brain thing that got you to your expert position and just nut it out, just kind of logic out the problem. It's not a logical problem, it's an illogical issue. Not illogical, you know, emotions aren't irrational, they're just illogical. So developing leaders who have the emotional intelligence to deal with high levels of anxiety and to build trust, to build credibility in that context, that's really what we're, we're, where the thinking around leadership is going. Some really nice work done by a guy called Bill George who uh, worked at Medtronic around the, con the you know, concept of authenticity, which is some really useful stuff and we, we use it in some of our programs here. Authenticity is really about knowing who you are and then being able to be that person. So, and all development programs, and again, our, our, our um, leadership development programs here, either through our the, the diploma space or even in the customized space, you start with self-awareness. How did you get to be you? And what's it like to be you? What's it like to be on the receiving end of you? So that building that self-awareness and there's a, there's a bit of honesty in that. And there's a bit of maturity, and a bit of emotional maturity in that. And then building self-regard. So how do you get to be good with that? So it's all very well knowing who you are, but we don't want to feed your inner critic with lots of other things to criticize you about. So we need to help you to understand who you are and how you got to be who you are and then get you to be okay with that. So it's not building self-esteem, which is this kind of narcissism. And we've seen what narcissism looks like, you know, at senior levels, and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for self-regard, which is I understand my weaknesses, I understand my strengths, and I'm okay with that. And I can work with that and I can develop that. So that's what we're trying to build, that self-awareness, the, the knowing who you are and being able to bring your best self. That's what authenticity, authenticity is really about. And it's, it's not aping some other form of leadership. It's not trying to be like Barack Obama, or I wish I could speak as fluently as you know, whoever, Michael B. Higgins, pick your, pick, your, <laughs> pick your exemplar. But it's about understanding who you are and being confident enough to be that person. In order to create courageous followership in others, and that's actually our definition of leadership is the ability to, cr to create followership the ability to get other people to exercise the free choice to follow, that, that's 
you know, our working definition of leadership. Um, the way to get people to follow you is to be worth following. The way to get people to trust you is to be trustworthy. So what is it about you that would, what, like, why would I want to be led by you? The, the great book by Goffey and Jones, why would anybody want to be led by you? That's a really good question. So it's in helping people formulate the answers to why would somebody follow you? What's in it for me? Where are you leading me to? Like, can I trust you? Um, uh, we say that you know people buy the person but before they buy the product or when you're asking people to buy in you're not asking people to buy into some message or some disembodied concept you're asking people to buy into you so why would I buy into you what is it about you that makes you worthy of following so can you be that person who's worthy of following well who would you follow and what is it about that person that would make you want to follow them who have you followed why how did that person make you feel so can you make people want to follow you? And that's all about being worth following. Like, where are you going? What's your idea? Will you look after me on this journey? Those are the kind of questions you need really good answers to. Yeah, you'd love to have both. <laughs> yes, and. Um, thinking about the level of change, like if you had to pick one, and it is a, is a kind of a difficult question, but if you had to pick one, you talk about flexibility. The problem with knowledge is, what is it that you know about? And when you look at senior people in organizations, you know, do senior people know more than junior people? Yes, they've been around longer, they do know more, but what is it that they know more about? Oh, they know more about how we used to win. Is that relevant any longer? So the, the people who win in the future and organizations who win in the future will be those people who can outlearn their competition, and that requires unlearning. So recognizing that some of my paradigms, some of my projections, some of some of my success recipes no longer work, and be having the, you know, the wherewithal, the gumption to go. Do you know what? That doesn't work anymore. I, that was great when I was back in the day, but it doesn't work with that anymore. So being able to let go, unlearn, be flexible, change, learn from others, take on new things—that's hugely, hugely important, and will continue to be. And particularly as people move up the organization, they will no longer be able to be expert. And we find this all the time with. Um, engineers or accountants or actuaries or lawyers who have a level of functional expertise that they have to let go and when you can no longer be the expert when what happens when you have to lead people who are more expert than you well, well then it comes down to what is it about you that's worth following well we've come through quite a difficult period and particularly with the organizations we're working with uh, um, the uh, kind of leading edge Irish organizations that work with us in the IMI. And actually it's been very interesting. There have been one or two who have absolutely committed to people development, even during the downturn. And those guys are now so far ahead of their competition who weren't doing that, they possibly will never be caught. So there was a really brave decision taken by a number of organizations to continue to commit. And they worked with us right through the, 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 the downturn and now they have this pipeline of leadership. And we can see in their results that that, that uh, impacts on, their, on the business performance. So commitment to leadership development, it, we see it in pockets. We'd love to see more. Uh, certainly organizations are beginning to reawaken, come back into that space to begin to develop leaders. And that's, that's all to the good. And I think as a knowledge economy, that's hugely important for us going forward. Um, and there's no substitute for developing internal uh, talent. I mean, there's, even if it's going to leave, that person will be a customer, that person will be, will be a partner, that person will be a supplier, that person will be a buyer. Um, so developing people, even if they leave, they're, they're, there's, there's, no, there's no alternative. It's, the, it's still the best thing to do for your business. But that's an absolute hostage to fortune, that one. <laughs> I refuse to be drawn into your web of lies. Um, the, well, seriously, it's, I, I'll answer the question in a different way. The, the idea, and we have this conversation in our classrooms, the idea of picking an exemplar leader is relatively problematic because it goes back to this uh, heroic view of leadership, that leadership with a capital L, leadership is a big thing, it's Barack Obama, it's a, you pick a, you know, whoever you're gonna pick, Donald Trump, whoever you want, you're gonna pick. And if that's what your idea of leadership is, you're always gonna fall short. That's not what leadership is. We talk about leadership with a small L. Everybody can be a leader. In, it's nothing to do with experience, it's nothing to do with IQ, it's nothing to do with position or chart or the size of your office. Or, it's to do with how you show up and the behaviors that you're capable of displaying day in, day out. That's what real leadership is all about. So I discourage people from picking, you know, heroic leadership. And we're in the, the uh, modern theories of leadership are all post-heroic. 
things like emotional intelligence or service, servant leadership or authentic leadership are post-heroic models of leadership. So you're better off to think about the kind of leader that you can be. In fact, the best leader that you can be is you. But it's you on your best day, not you on your average day.